Team Giannis finally picked up a win in the All-Star game, but we did not see a lot from Giannis across the weekend. On the court, anyway, how concerned are we about this? And are we more concerned than we were at the start of All-Star weekend? He also drafted Damian Lillard first. What does that mean? Let's have some fun on today's show, breaking down the All-Star weekend. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks. My name's Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show Monday to Friday and also find my work over at ESPN alongside me from the Bucks Radio Network. Enjoying a week off from the grind of the regular season, but not a week off from the grind of Locked On Bucks. It's Justin Garcia, and we thank everyone for making Locked On Bucks your first watch or first listen of every day we appreciate the support particularly on youtube if you haven't subscribed or followed on whatever platform you watch or listen to this show uh, please do so it really helps us and of course it's free and then come on youtube and at least drop a comment uh, start a debate we like it we love getting involved the engagement's been really great of late so we absolutely appreciate that all-star weekend is in the books people have their different views about this justin but the biggest story, clearly for us, has just been trying to sleuth Giannis, the wrist injury, have a look. What does he look like? Is there anything we can see? Is he wearing a bandage? Is there a cast? Now there is a bandage. He don't. He didn't play in this All-Star game. Well, he, I'm not going to say he dunked. He dropped the ball in on the first possession, which was clearly set up. Everyone knew it was going to happen. Then he intentionally fouled and got out of the game. Would you say your concern for Giannis has increased or decreased since the start of this weekend? Because I have to say... He did not look like he was really looking to do anything at all with this hand. Um, hmm. I I don't. It certainly hasn't decreased. I don't know <laughs> if it increased. It was already relatively uh, high, just because when you hear wrist sprain and it's the shooting hand, it's never good. It didn't look good, and um, even the post game with the presentation that they had of the MVP award and. Giannis is the team captain had to, had to get the award and hand it out. He was not putting any weight underneath or putting that, that wrist and that hand supporting any weight. It was all left hand. So um, certainly not, uh, not diminishing any of my level of concern for that wrist after Thursday night. Yeah. We're just going to have to wait and see what, uh, if there is or when there is a, a further report on this, but I would tend to agree that, the concern was always a little bit high, and we joked about it with Camille the other night about Giannis. He'll never give anything away. He is the ultimate showman, and he looked like he had one of the great weekends of his life out there doing all the entertaining and having his little notebook in the draft, which we can get to. So that's why we love him. That's what makes him so special is that there was no attention to this. He didn't want to talk about it. He didn't want anyone asking, and I'm sure that he wanted to play in this game. But when you look at the skills challenge, and it is with his brothers who we said he would desperately want to do, and let's be honest, there can't be anything with a lower intensity than that skills challenge yesterday in which the, the Bucks contingent didn't put up a great showing. But Giannis not even doing that. I'm just like, that, that is not helping my concern because it, what can happen in the skills challenge? Like, I know, it's, I know it's the right risk, but if you were just being safe, I don't know. I don't know whether you would need to for something like that. Uh, well, I would argue after uh, having sat through that All-Star game, um, there... It, it, you wouldn't really need any LeBron, uh, that hurt. yeah um but yeah i think we're both aligned of i i don't know if this weekend increased my uh nervousness or i don't want to say pessimism but just worry and level of concern but uh it didn't it didn't do anything to make me feel better so the bucks have 24 games left in the regular season and we will just hold our breath for any type of update. They don't play until Friday, so is there going to be something that comes through soon? I'm not sure, uh, but we will wait and see if there is any update there with Giannis. Typically, things are pretty quiet, so I would like an update one way or the other. That would be uh, pretty good. What about this draft, though? So we discussed this, and this was, if we want to have the fun part, just push aside any type of anxiety or concern right now. The fun part was the draft. Now, I don't know whether it was just Australia. There seemed to be some significant audio issues. So I had trouble hearing some of this draft and what people were saying. But Giannis went ahead 
And with his first pick in the draft, everyone knows that he's going to pick Drew Holiday. LeBron and Ernie Johnson are making jokes about the fact that he's going to pick Drew Holiday. And then he picked Damian Lillard. Does that mean Damian Lillard is coming to the Bucks? Because I knew as soon as he did it, everyone would be tweeting that. And I went on and my timeline was just full of people saying, Dame is coming to the Bucks. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's there's been a number of these things, too, where Giannis has, has singled out Damian Lillard. And uh, there seems to be this kind of mutual admiration society between the two guys that have really been adamant of, like, I'm, I'm going to make this work here with the team that drafted me. And uh, you mentioned the jokes that were going on too. It seemed to legitimately catch LeBron James off guard that he assumed it was going to be Drew Holiday and kind of joked about his draft strategy like the rest of us with a fantasy draft where the guy sitting next to you just drafts a Packer where somebody else should have went. And you're like, really? And it kind of throws you for a loop. And it seems like that's what it did with LeBron um, to not just go ahead and, and do the spike move of say, fine, I'll take Drew here then. Now that would have been funny, but it is, it is just genuinely interesting. Like I was very surprised that that's the path he went down unless he thought that LeBron was going to draft Dame with his first pick or something like that. Like it was just a bizarre move, but also highly entertaining. He then tried to draft Ja Morant, who was a starter. So he could not draft him. Where do you lie on this being a, a bit from Giannis? Do you think that was intentional? Do you think he was genuinely confused? Well, he often tells us he doesn't pay attention to <laughs> social media. So I, I have to take him at face value that he didn't realize that John Morant was in the starting lineup there. I'm not 100% sure about this. Last one on this draft stuff. And, you know, uh, we don't like to criticize Giannis at all, but there has been a bit of a reputation that he is a, a shonky GM. Now, he said on the broadcast, I am a really good GM or high quality GM or whatever he said. But I did find it fascinating when... LeBron went ahead and drafted, who did he draft? He drafted a big and, or he, yeah, he drafted Joel Embiid first yeah. with his starters. So Giannis said, well, you've drafted a big, so I need to draft a big. And then he went ahead and, and drafted every single guard possible on the roster. And I was a little bit surprised that he didn't draft Nikola Jokic. Yeah. Yeah. I was a little surprised by that too. Um, especially because he followed up like not even with a forward or a guy like, oh, well, he's a small ball four, but just went with all smalls even after he pointed out, oh, you went big, so I need to match your size. Uh, but look, it, it finally worked that Giannis finally gets in the win column as the captain of the team. Yeah, I did sort of bury the score, but 184, 175, absolutely ridiculous in this game. Disrespectful that Nikola Jokic was second last in the starters or not? Because, well, first of all, was it disrespectful that Jokic was second last picked out of the starters? And then secondly, was it disrespectful of Jokic to not even wait for LeBron to pick him and just stand up and walk ahead, making the assumption that there is no possible way a human could pick Larry Markkinen ahead of Nikola Jokic? Well, it's, it's, uh, it, it's funny not to like shift in a totally different direction, but it, you do kind of get the impression that um, in terms of his peers, it's kind of the same thing Giannis went through the the first few years he was really ascending. And, and certainly those two years that he won the MVP where we talked about his peers, there was nobody that really was outspoken of, man, this guy's really good and would come to his defense. There was all these kind of quasi passive aggressive beefs that other players had with Giannis. And you could count on one hand, the guys who are like, oh, this is kind of a Giannis ally. Uh, it does really feel like it's the same thing with Nikola Jokic that his mm. peers are kind of like, well, I mean, this is the triple double guy, but uh, it's he's the advanced stats MVP and does things that we don't necessarily agree with. And I think case in point, him being left all the way in the end and make no mistake, LeBron James was going to draft Lowry Markkinen just because he was in Utah and Nikola Jokic would have been picked last on Team Giannis if he didn't do that. Interesting. Interesting theory. That would have been pretty wild because as we saw, they did do the, the ESPN straw poll last week. And I think, yeah, for the most part, if we were doing it right now, Giannis and Jokic feel like maybe they've separated themselves from the rest of the pack. That's certainly how I would see it. But it was heavily in favor of Jokic, which was a little bit of a surprise. I thought it would have been uh, a little bit closer there. We can talk about the rest of the weekend and any other funny parts from that. Then we're going to get into this Bucks season. Obviously, it continues... Uh, pretty soon this weekend, probably too much of a of a break for mine when we're doing this podcast daily, of, of course. We're going to have to come up with some content, Justin. But first, 
We're going to talk about our friends at Nissan. Nissan. For the Nissan's most electric player of the week, which is brought to you by the all-new, all-electric 2023 Nissan Aria. And uh, we have to say the uh, the electric performance of the week this week is goes to Team Adetokumbo in the Skills Challenge. I'm giving it to them because they may not have got the points but I thought that the hustle was there. We saw Alex was sliding into a car on the sideline. We have never seen hustle like that on the All-Star Weekend. So I'm still giving it to him. And much like the Nissan Aria, that performance from that team, Adetokumbo, was brilliantly fierce, fiercely elegant, stunningly powerful, elegantly powerful. And uh, the Nissan Aria delivers on duality, a combination of fierceness and elegance, beautiful but strong. The perfect SUV crossover. And uh, the 2023 Nissan Aria packs pin to your seat power and premium intelligence all in one EV. The all new, all electric 2023 Nissan Aria, the EV for the people who love to drive. Shop now at NissanUSA.com. Now, I do joke. uh, Some of the stuff across this weekend, a little bit difficult to watch. So the intensity is really, really down. Some. Okay. Some because I like the three point contest and the dunk contest made a, a, a strong comeback last night. I would say, sure. I, I mean, are you outraged? We have some people, and I always say it's always funny to me like people get outraged about the all star weekend. Like, we need to change this, we need to do that, we need to just get rid of it altogether. I don't care that much. Like, I think I know what you're getting yourself into. Sometimes you're like, what is the point of this? I totally understand, but do you enjoy it at all? Uh, I don't enjoy it. Am I outraged? No, it's, it's kind of like what I would assume it would be like to, uh, be a parent of a teenager where, you know, I have a feeling they're not going to do everything I want, but you, you, well, they'll, they'll learn from it. Although I I don't know what the learning lesson is with these all-star games. It's just, it's been probably 10 years since we had a good all-star game and it's in all likelihood, never coming back that, especially when we're talking about Giannis dealing with an injury the final game before the all-star break stuff like that I mean you're you're just never going to see players playing intense defense or really trying there and the whole um Elam ending thing it seemed like it worked the first year you did it and it was more of a novel concept the 24 to honor Kobe but that also just seems like it was a all right we tried this the whole thing I, I mean I think also we did the whole captains thing just because the majority of the talent was in the Western conference and it was year after year of man, this again. And that's just not the case anymore that I I think the whole captains and drafting thing too is overblown and we can just go back to East versus West. Well, it was tough for Bucks fans this weekend as well, because obviously we've mentioned Giannis who comes up with the zero minutes on the box score, but Drew Holiday only played nine minutes in this all-star game as well. What's going on with that? Were you surprised that he didn't play too much? Because at least if you're a Bucks fan, you're still tuning into the game. You've got Giannis on the sideline. Good value. But Drew, I know the All-Star game is not necessarily where you think Drew Holiday is going to do his absolute best work. He's a defensive player, all those types of things. Maybe he's not a above-the-rim highlight machine, but nine minutes. Yeah, well, also, um, I think there's two things to look at. One, uh, I'm sure the Bucks were probably like, that's perfectly fine, especially yeah. until we learn the severity of this Giannis wrist injury. Great. But also, I wonder how much of it was, jokingly, uh, players campaigning to Joe Missoula as well. Of, Look, Giannis, we know, is going to play hard out there. At least we don't have to worry about him. This Drew Holiday guy, this is the all-star game. Like, we just want this to be glorified layup lines. Can you limit his minutes? Well, plus six in nine minutes there with the – three points and two assists so drew did knock down one three-point shot at least but just happy to see him back involved in the festivities had been 10 years uh, since he had been back there quick thoughts on the dunk contest before we get back to this nba season it's funny because i've always had this take that the social media is what has killed the dunk contest because these instagram dunkers are so damn good that you almost can't see anything that you haven't seen before and you're probably not going to see the high level of dunks you'll see in one take that an Instagrammer puts on their profile. And I know Mac McClung can actually play basketball, but he's a social media superstar for doing dunks. And that is the reason that the dunk contest is back. So what do they do now next year? They just have to have Instagrammers? 
Uh, you know what? Just go with all G leaguers. Do something like that where you, you you do something too, like the opposite of relegation too. Do it or make it a relegation slam dunk contest where you get guys that are on the fringe and you bring in two G leaguers. And if a G league guy wins, he gets your spot on the roster and you're bumped down to the G league. Yeah, get Rajon Tucker back over to the US. Maybe he can. I've seen him do some absolutely ridiculous stuff over here in Melbourne this season. Maybe uh, he will go back over to the G League and get some stuff done. All right, we're going to talk about the upcoming schedule for the Milwaukee Bucks because it does get a little bit difficult. And the standings are still packed. The Bucks obviously have won 12 straight. Depending on what happens again, we have to keep saying that disclaimer. They might have needed every single one of those wins. But first... If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you've got to try a Built Bar. We just got through the holidays. Uh, people want to eat healthier in the new year. I've certainly tried to do so. But you can do it with Built Bar because not only do you not feel like you're on any type of health kick because it just tastes so good. It's covered in 100% chocolate. And the best thing is the flavors. Churro, peanut butter brownie, coconut almond, just to name a few. Double chocolate, coconut puffs, cookies and cream. You can keep going down the list. But there's only 130 calories and 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And you don't need to wait around to get your box in the mail now. In the mail now, You can just go to Walmart or Sam's Club and pick up a 13-bar box and get straight into them as soon as you get home. Of course, if you're old school, you can still purchase your orders at Built.com as well. So go check out Built Bar if you haven't done it yet. If you're close to a Sam's Club or Walmart, run in and grab a 13-bar box right now and get yourself some brownie batter or churro. You can thank me later for that. So if we look at the standings in the Eastern Conference, uh, Justin, and keeping in mind that you know, we talk about the health stuff, you know, Chris Milton obviously missed that last game, but you know, we think that he's ramping up, or we cert- he certainly appeared to be ramping up prior to the All-Star break. You're hoping to get Bobby Portis back soon. You're going to integrate Jay Crowder as well. So there are some bodies to come back into this team. We'll see what's up with Pat Connaughton, whether that was just calf soreness or there was something a little more sinister that had returned there. But the Bucks, from a health perspective, will be able to get some of the other guys back into the lineup. But they needed this, this 12-game winning streak to stay on pace with the Boston Celtics. But the other thing is, I spoke about this with Frank, they have got a little bit of breathing room now with the idea that, yeah, we spoke about it, whether the win total for the season was at around 53, 54. They can basically be a 500 win team, a 500 team down the stretch here over the last 24 games and still reach that mark. So they are in pretty damn good shape. The other thing to note is just where the Sixers and the Cavs are and what they would have to do to overtake a Bucks team that played 500 basketball because, you know, as we talk about all the variables of why this team potentially can finish strong or maybe have to battle through some stuff here in the final weeks, it is worth noting that that top two seed, we talk about the number one seed, but the top two seed would be just a, a beautiful thing to at least not have to have that Celtics matchup around earlier. Yeah, and so I we've talked about it on, on this show. I've talked about it on um, some of my shows too of the importance, I thought, of uh, winning the conference, if not at least finishing in the top two, just because especially after the trade deadline, you looked at some of those moves by the rest of the East and it looked even more like it was Bucks and the Celtics and then maybe a half step below, although they've been really good in terms of all of their advanced numbers for the last month and a half is the 76ers, but still a three team conference as good as the Cavs have been. Those three teams were above everybody else in the East. So you thought that puts more importance on getting the one seed to know, okay, if you're the Bucks and you're you finish first, you don't have to play the Celtics or the Sixers until the conference finals. And your second round matchup would be the Cavs, maybe the Nets, who knows there. Uh, but the interesting part is one, the big unknown with what happens with Giannis. Uh, I would assume he's going to miss time just by watching him at the All Star break. But how much time is that it, that he's going to miss? Also, Philadelphia have. 25 games left, which is the most in the league, and they have the most difficult schedule remaining. I think the the, the opponent win percentage is close to 55% down the stretch. They have four games with the Celtics and the Bucks. They have the Cavs on there. They have the Grizzlies on there. They still have the Nuggets. So they have a really, really difficult schedule and a lot of games. So we thought, well, one through three is pretty well locked in stone. 
Philly has a pretty difficult schedule while the Cavs have one of the easier schedules left in basketball. And, you know, right now it's two games separating those two. It's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. And as a matter of fact, I think it's probably more likely that Cleveland is going to catch Philadelphia, maybe for the three seed, maybe even higher, depending on what happens with the Bucs and their injuries. So the whole best laid plans thing where you thought, okay, these are the top three teams get one or two and you're pretty well set with home court. Well, now who knows? Philadelphia could slide down. The Bucs could slide down depending on what happens there. And if that's the case, then you're getting really strange matchups, not so much in the first round, but in the second round, not what you expected to see. So just as you're saying that, we've got a tweet from Tim Bontemps. So here we go. This And this is, look, we, we suspected that there was – some concern. So Tim Bontemps says Bucks star Giannis Didacumbo will travel to New York on Monday to undergo further testing on his injured right uh, wrist. So, I mean, it, it doesn't sound great. And and we'll wait to see what this shows up. But this is this is basically what we were sort of speculating through the first you know part of this podcast, that you take the signs, the physical signs of what you've seen across the weekend, and to get further testing suggests, okay, maybe they got some testing done and they didn't like what they saw let's go somewhere else and see if there is a potentially something sinister or a different path to treat this so i think the idea that we are concerned about this is is more than fair enough right now because the other thing to note is if it does go down the path where you've got to miss weeks potentially if you're seeing a specialist i want to talk about it but is is surgery an option maybe You've only got two months from basically today until game one of the postseason. And that's why if you talk about the Bucs and say, okay, if you're a 500 team, if so if you didn't, worst case scenario, if you didn't have Giannis for weeks, are the Bucs a 500 team? Probably. I mean, they've got a difficult schedule coming up. They've got Miami, Phoenix, Brooklyn, and Philadelphia in four out of the first five games out of the All-Star break. So it's going to be challenging for the Bucs here as well. So this is absolutely not what you wanted to hear. Uh, coming out of the all-star break and into this stretch run. Yeah, um, uh, not totally unexpected. And, and again, we still don't have a timeline or, or what it actually means. But when you're uh, when you're seeking the opinion of a specialist, it's it's never good. Um, I, I don't think so. Let's say Giannis absolute worst case scenario, the final 24 games, 20. Uh, yeah, 24 games. You don't have him. I still don't see any way the Bucks would slide lower than fourth, just given what they've already built up here, that they're six up in the loss column on Cleveland. And I know we just said Cleveland has one of the easier schedules remaining, but Brooklyn, you're seven up in the loss column. That's a team that is basically like the Bucks light without Giannis. Now with their new roster construction, the Knicks, you're 10 up in the loss column. So again, the big thing is you're probably not going to slide all that far. And if you can stay healthy, you still have Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton. We we had assumed Bobby Portis might be back after the All-Star break, immediately after the All-Star break, Brooke Lopez. So it's still a good team that you have. It's just you don't have arguably the best player in the world for uh, for who knows how long. And then that changes things, as, as you mentioned before, as I said, I don't see any scenario where they slide lower than four. Well, sliding a four likely means you're playing the Boston Celtics in the second round of the playoffs, and you might have a a difficult matchup with a team like the Nets or the Knicks in the first round. Yeah, and it just makes it more difficult, and I think you were alluding to this. It just makes it more difficult to try and manage all the different guys if 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 your number one guy is out for whatever, five games, ten games, whatever it may be. That just makes it more difficult. You're trying to manage Chris and – give him nights off. I'm, I assume you know, Brooke Lopez has hardly missed a game all season long. You would love to be able to get him some rest, you know, leading into the postseason as well. So it just potentially changes the calculations, but uh, you know, perhaps by the time we podcast tomorrow, there'll be further updates and uh, we've got a few days here until the Bucks play. So I'm sure that this is not going to be the end of the conversation around Giannis, but anytime there's even a possible injury to him, it is about the worst possible scenario if you're a Bucks fan. So not ideal, Justin. Not ideal. But, uh, I, there's no other way to describe this. Uh, yeah, suboptimal is uh, is how I would put it. Well, we will see. There's nothing else or nothing further to add right now other than uh, panic and uh, baseless uh, speculation. So we'll wait and see what comes 
over the next 20, 24 hours or so when we podcast tomorrow. We will be back tomorrow, so we'll definitely be able to talk more about that. Make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Bucks podcast on the audio platform or video wherever you find us so you can keep up with all the latest. Turn the notifications on for the show and get involved. Jump in the comments, hit like. All those things help us a lot. We appreciate it. Also, check out the Locked On Game to Game podcast on your Locked On NBA feed and you will uh, be able to get recaps from right across the NBA and keep up to date with everything going on across the league. That's a Locked On Game to Game podcast. Justin, you got a few more days off. Thanks for giving us some time today in your break. We really appreciate it. Oh, anytime, anytime. All right. We'll be back tomorrow. I'll drag Frank on. Hopefully, uh, we have some uh, (laughs) optimistic news to report. We'll catch you all tomorrow.